Why did Monet paint Rouen Cathedral so many times? Monet was fascinated by optical realism and painted multiple, over 30. Canvases 184 of the facade of Rouen Cathedral as an exploration of the Properties of ever-changing light and the perception of light by the human eye. Imagine looking across a bright street with squinted eyes. Trying to make out the buildings on the other side. With its niches and varied textures, the church fagade was a perfect subject for such experimentation. In the intense sunlight, Rouen Cathedral loses detail and its physicality dissolves. Since the sun is constantly moving through the sky, the light reflecting off the building is constantly changing, and Monet attempted to capture the fleeting quality of this light in his work, which is also responsible for the unfinished style. Monet embraced the aesthetic value of the quick sketch, though he meticulously worked on these pictures in his studio at Giverny. And he hoped to capture this in his series of paintings of Rouen Cathedral. Why did Monet paint Rouen Cathedral so many times? Monet was fascinated by optical realism and painted multiple, over 30. Canvases 184 of the facade of Rouen Cathedral as an exploration of the properties of ever-changing light and the perception of light by the human eye. Imagine looking across a bright street with squinted eyes. Trying to make out the buildings on the other side. With its niches and varied textures, the church fagade was a perfect subject for such experimentation. In the intense sunlight, Rouen Cathedral loses detail and its physicality dissolves. Since the sun is constantly moving through the sky. The light reflecting off the building is constantly changing, and Monet attempted to capture the fleeting quality of this light in his work, which is also responsible for the unfinished style. Monet embraced the aesthetic value of the quick sketch, though he meticulously worked on these pictures in his studio at Giverny. And he hoped to capture this in his series of paintings of Rouen Cathedral. Who was Suzuki Harunobu? Suzuki Harunobu, 1724-1770 Was an innovative Edo printmaker who was the first to produce multicolored prints. He became famous for his Nishiki, brocade. Prince of beautiful courtesans, including Geisha as a Daruma crossing the sea, mid 18th century, which depicts an elegant woman wrapped in a red cloak, staring into the wind as nearby reeds seem to rustle behind her. The print is an example of Haranobu's mastery of color, and of the popularity of not only courtesan scenes but also of theater in ukiyo-e painting, as the woman takes on the persona of the mythological Daruma. During the Edo period, stylized kabuki theater was extremely popular. And pictures like this often depicted popular actors and characters from the stage. 
Suzuki Harunobu was one of the most commercially successful artists working in Edo. Tokyo, and his multicolored prints helped to popularize the ukiyo-e style. What is Rubenesque? Rubens had a very particular way of depicting figures in his paintings. His works are filled with strong, voluptuous, and attractive people. His style is so consistent, that these Rubenesque figures serve as a relatively quick and easy way to identify Rubens' painting. In his mythological painting, Venus and Adonis, c. 1635, Rubens depicts the ancient goddess of love just as her lover, Paris, must leave. Along with her cherubic son Cupid, Venus clings to Adonis. Her long, red hair flows around her face and her supple fingers press into Adonis' muscular arms as she pleads with him. Nude, her body is fleshy and white quite different from the thin. Elongated forms popular during previous centuries of Northern European art. The term Rubinesque is therefore used to describe any similarly depicted figure in the work of other artists who have been inspired by the Flemish master. Who was Rachel Royce? Rachel Roach, 1664-1750 Was one of three prominent women artists working in Netherlands in the 17th century. The others were Maria van Oosterwijk, known for her still lives. And Judith Leister, who painted genre scenes and portraits. Rachel Roach specialized in flower still lives, which were enormously popular during the so-called Dutch Golden Age. One of Roach's still lives was even given as a gift to the visiting Queen of France, Marie de Medici. Flowers were popular subjects for still lives because of their metaphorical associations. With the fragility and impermanence of life, lending these paintings moralizing meanings. What is Yukiyoi painting? In Japanese, Ukiyoi literally means pictures of the floating world. This Buddhist phrase is used to describe a style of Japanese woodblock prints and paintings that developed during the Edo period, 1603 to 1868, and continued on through the 20th century. Woodblock prints from the Edo period were a major influence on Impressionist painters in France and were notable for their use of color, the importance of landscape, and the focus on bourgeois life through images of dancing, theaters, geishas, and urban street scenes. Ukiyo-e woodblock prints are delicately colored with natural dyes and feature thinly outlined forms. They were affordable and extremely popular during the 18th and 19th centuries and were sold by shopkeepers and street vendors in big cities such as Tokyo, known as Edo during the 18th century. 
Three separate artists usually made woodblock prints, a painter, a carver, and a printer. The painter would first paint the original image. Then, a block of wood, often made of cherry, was carved with the outline of the image to be printed. Covered in black ink, and then pressed to fine paper. A separate block was carved for each additional color used. This meant that multiple blocks were required for a single print. Sometimes as many as 20 separate blocks. Ukiyo-e woodblock prints depicted the secular, material world. Though artists subtly emphasized the Buddhist concept of the transient nature of physical existence. What is art for art's sake? During the 19th century, there was, and continues to be, a debate about the role and function of art in society. The term art for art's sake was first coined by Victor Cousins, a French philosopher, and reflects the tenets of aestheticism, which is centered on the idea that there is no purpose for art other than beauty. There were some critics of this idea. Karl Marx, for example, thought that art is a reflection of social class and has the power to make political change. The foremost English art critic, John Ruskin, believed that art had both political and social significance and therefore had a purpose more far reaching than beauty alone. Who was Rembrandt? Rembrandt van Rijn, 1606-1669, was a Dutch painter known for his expressive paintings and prints. Including portraits, landscapes, and both mythological and biblical scenes. His paintings often rely on dramatic chiaroscuro, which highlights the faces of his figures against dark, sometimes nearly black, backgrounds. He is considered one of the most important artists of the 17th century. He worked in Amsterdam for mostly Protestant patrons, usually wealthy merchants who commissioned portraits. 17th century Amsterdam was an economic powerhouse and his paintings were in high demand as luxury items and financial investments. During his lifetime he achieved incredible wealth and success, only to lose it all in his later years. His changes in fortune are documented in his approximately 75 thoughtful self-portraits. Some of his notable works include The Night Watch, 1642, The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nikolai's Tulp, 1632, and Bathsheba at Her Bath, 1654. Why was Horatio Greenoff's sculpture of George Washington so controversial? Horatio Greenoff, 1805-1852, was a neoclassical sculptor and artist. And is considered to be the first professional American sculptor. 
His grand marble sculpture of President George Washington was modeled after a sculpture of Zeus at Olympia by Phidias, an ancient Greek sculptor, and depicts the first president semi-nude, wearing a Roman toga, and seated in a lion throne. His right arm points up towards heaven in a pose similar to Raphael's. Depiction of Plato in the Renaissance fresco, The School of Athens Greenoff's purpose with this pose was to emphasize Washington's role as a military leader and philosopher. When the sculpture was displayed in the Capitol Rotunda in 1841, however, the public found it shocking and inappropriate, and some even found it funny. The sculpture fell into disrepair and was eventually moved to the Smithsonian. It can now be seen at the National Museum of American History. Who was Diego Velasquez? Diego Velázquez (1599–1660) was a leading Spanish painter from Seville, who served as the court painter to King Philip IV. Inspired by the style of Caravaggio, Velázquez's work emphasized naturalism, contrasts of light and dark, and the dignity of everyday people. He painted portraits of King Philip IV and Pope Innocent X, as well as Juan de Pereja, a slave, and Sebastian de Mora, a dwarf and attendant at court. Velázquez was particularly concerned with raising the status of the artist in Spain and works such as Las Hill Honduras, c. 1657, and Las Meninas, 1656, have been associated with this theme. Why did Monet paint Rouen Cathedral so many times? Monet was fascinated by optical realism and painted multiple, over 30. Canvases 184 of the facade of Rouen Cathedral as an exploration of the properties of ever-changing light and the perception of light by the human eye. Imagine looking across a bright street with squinted eyes. Trying to make out the buildings on the other side. With its niches and varied textures, the church fagade was a perfect subject for such experimentation. In the intense sunlight, Rouen Cathedral loses detail and its physicality dissolves. Since the sun is constantly moving through the sky, the light reflecting off the building is constantly changing, and Monet attempted to capture the fleeting quality of this light in his work. Which is also responsible for the unfinished style. Monet embraced the aesthetic value of the quick sketch, though he meticulously worked on these pictures in his studio at Giverny. And he hoped to capture this in his series of paintings of Rouen Cathedral. How did Japanese art change during the Meiji period? The Meiji period lasted from 1868 to 1912, and during this time oil painting became 
popular in Japan after Japanese artists were exposed to Western styles of art. Subjects popular during the Edo period, such as courtesans, were still popular during the Meiji period. For example, in 1872, Takahashi Yuichi painted Warren, Grand Courtesan. A Western-style portrait painted in oil, but that incorporates patterns and colors used in ukiyo-e paintings. In this painting, Takahashi Yuichi, 1828-1894, depicts the elegant sitter's brightly colored garments as disparate. Abstract sections of color and texture, a technique derived from traditional Japanese painting. Western styles were so popular during the Meiji period that some artists were concerned that Japan would lose its own distinctive style. Traditional artists such as Yokoyama Taken 1853 to 1908 wanted to breathe life into Japanese styles of painting by infusing them with some Western techniques. But to emphasize their Japanese character in a style known as Nihonga. Who was Peter Paul Rubens? Peter Paul Rubens, 1577-1640, was a Flemish painter whose work is characterized by a rich painterly style and a lively, expressive tone. His paintings are often monumental in size, include deep red colors, a favorite of Rubens, and were sought after by both aristocratic and Catholic patrons. He painted mythological, genre, and Christian subjects. Rubens worked for patrons such as King Charles I of England, the Habsburgs, and the Spanish royal family. Rubens traveled across Europe studying earlier masters and even contemporaries such as Caravaggio. He was highly successful and was able to build his own grand home and studio in Antwerp. Rubens was a prolific painter, some of his most famous paintings include The Raising of the Cross, c. 1610, which is a 15-foot tall triptych in the church of St. Walpurga in Antwerp, as well as Venus and Adonis, c. 1635, and the recently attributed Massacre of the Innocents, c. 1611, which sold for over $70 million at auction in 2002. What is the difference between Romanticism and Realism? Although seemingly at odds, 19th century realism overlapped quite a bit with the Romantic movement of the same period. While the Romantics reacted against the Enlightenment and were often idealistic in their representation of historical and current events, the 19th century realists were interested in accurately depicting the human condition, with an element of social awareness. Both realists and romantics value direct observation of nature. Though realists further emphasized social observation and, occasionally, political and social satire. Who invented photography?
the process of photography, in which an image is fixed by recording light through chemical. And now digital, means, was not invented by a single individual. The concept had been around for thousands of years in the form of the camera obscura. A small, dark box with a tiny hole on one side that allows light to enter. The light reveals an image from outside the box. Which is either reflected onto a surface with a small mirror, or passes through onto a wall. A large-scale camera obscura can even be made in a darkened room. Artists used the camera obscura to view small details in a scene. Scholars hypothesize that Johannes Vermeer and other 18th-century artists may have used such a device to achieve such heightened detail in their work. The problem for artists, however, was to take the image produced by the camera obscura and make it permanent. The first person to do this was Louis Jacques Mondé Daguerre, a painter. How did the art of Spain influence art in the New World? Starting in the 16th century, Spanish culture began to dominate Central and South America as Spanish conquerors destroyed native temples and missionaries. Work to convert native populations to Catholicism, sometimes forcefully. By the 18th century, Catholicism in Latin America had become infused with native beliefs which directly inspired new styles of art and architecture. An example of this fusion can be seen in the nearly 12-foot-tall atrial cross from the Basilica of Guadalupe in Mexico City, which was made sometime before the 1560s. This large, stone crucifix was hung in the church's atrium and was decorated by native artists commissioned by Christian missionaries. The cross decoration blends images associated with Christ, such as the crown of thorns and the holy shroud, with Central American symbols of the tree of life. The atrial cross was a common decoration in parts of the church where new native Converts were introduced to Catholicism, and the decoration of the cross at Guadalupe underscores its function as a visual marriage of cultures and beliefs. What were the dominant styles of architecture in the Spanish New World? In Spanish Latin American, Baroque styles of architecture remained popular long after it had fallen out of fashion in Europe. Throughout the 18th century, magnificent examples of Baroque architecture continued to be built in countries such as Mexico, Peru, Ecuador, and even further afield in the Philippines. The Church of Saints Sebastian and Santa Prisco, in Toscata Alarcon, Mexico, is a good example of an 18th century Baroque church heavily decorated in stucco sculpture in a popular style known as the Churigaresque. Near Tucson, Arizona, the Mission San Xavier del BAC was also built in the 18th century and reflected Spanish Baroque styles. 
the nearly 100-foot-long church was built using brick and mortar. Rather than adobe, which was commonly used by the native people of Arizona. Why did Whistler go to court? James Abbott McNeil Whistler, 1834103, is now most famous for a portrait of his mother in a rocking chair. But his work during the second half of the 19th century is notable for its increasing abstraction. Whistler was American, but spent the majority of his career in London. And never returned to the United States after moving to that English city. His early paintings were influenced by aestheticism and he painted many successful portraits. But he was interested in the idea of art as a visual music. He even named an 1862 portrait of a girl in a white dress, Symphony in White No. 1, to emphasize the musicality of his work. In his 1893 autobiography, The Gentle Art of Making Enemies, he wrote. As music is the poetry of sound, so is painting the poetry of sight and the subject matter. Has nothing to do with harmony of sound or of color, as quoted in Stockstad 885. In 1875, Whistler shocked the world with his almost completely abstract painting. Nocturne in Black and Gold, also known as the Falling Rocket. Whistler was accused of having no clear subject for his work. And those who viewed it described it as looking unfinished. The painting personally enraged John Ruskin, Britain's premier art critic who accused the artist of throwing paint in the public's face with such an abstract work. Whistler sued Ruskin for libel and soon Whistler found himself on the witness stand answering questions about his artistic intentions. When asked about the subject of the painting, Whistler explained that he was attempting an artistic arrangement and a representation of fireworks over the town of Cremern. Not a realistic visualization of the town. He further explained his support for the aesthetic concept of art for art's sake. Whistler won the trial, but received only a single farthing in damages. A reflection of the generally negative attitude about his work at the time. The episode also highlights the vigor with which artists and critics were debating the value of increased abstraction. What was the Hudson River School? The artists of the Hudson River School, such as Thomas Cole, Asher B. Durand, Frederick Edwin Church, and Albert Bierstadt, were American artists interested in establishing an American tradition separate from the influences of European art. The work of this informal group was certainly initially inspired by Romanticism and European landscapes but demonstrated a certain realism, and was philosophically tied to transcendentalism. As expressed by the American philosophers Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. 
through open air, or plein air, painting, which required significant hiking and traveling to locations that reached from the Catskills to Niagara Falls to Yosemite Valley. The artists of the Hudson River School depicted an apparent untouched Eden. That juxtaposed sweetly pastoral scenes with the power of the American wilderness. What is Las Meninas? Las Meninas, 1656, is huge, both in its physical size and its significance in the history of art. While at first glance the painting appears to be a simple depiction of the young princess, Infanta Margarita Teresa, posing for her portrait, further inspection reveals a much more complicated scene. The Petit Princess, wearing a white dress and a ribbon in her blonde hair, is at the relative center of the image and is surrounded by her doting attendants and a well-behaved dog. Behind the attendants, a chaperone and perhaps a bodyguard, watch over the room. In the far right background, an open door lets light into the space as the Queen's Chamberlain steps in. To the left of the group stands the artist himself, Diego Velázquez. He is poised and confident with his shoulders back, holding his palette for the viewer to clearly see. In front of him is an enormous canvas upon which he is. Presumably painting the image that we are now seeing. Curiously, just behind the infanta's head, is a mirror hung on the back wall. Within this mirror, we can see a reflection of the king and queen. What is the difference between the work of Hokusai and Hiroshigi? Katsushika Hokusai, 1760-1849, and Yudagawa Hiroshig, 1797-1858, were two of the most successful landscape painters in 19th century Japan and their prints are among the most recognizable examples of graphic art in the world. Both artists explored the transience of the material world in their ukiyo-e paintings. Hokusai was especially well known for his series, 36 Views of Mount Fuji. His print The Great Wave off Kanagawa represents a monumental wave cresting with stylized foam. About to crash near a group of men in long, graceful boats shaped to mirror the curves of the ocean swells. Appearing unexpectedly in the background is the distant image of snow-capped Mount Fuji. Which lies low along the horizon line. The white peak of Mount Fuji looks similar to a white-capped swell in the foreground making the formidable mountain appear as temporary as an ocean wave. The Great Wave is an example of Hokusai's use of the European color, Prussian blue, and demonstrates the simplicity and dynamism of Japanese art during the Edo period. Like Hokusai, Hiroshige was a master of the Edo period who specialized in landscapes. Some of his prints also include images of Mount Fuji, including view of Mount Fuji from Sata Point in the Suriga Bay. 1589, a woodcut that depicts a curling wave similar to the one painted by Hokusai. Hiroshige was almost 40 years younger than Hokusai, 
and was greatly inspired by the older artist's work. Among his most famous works were his prints for the series. 100 Views of Edo, 1856-1859, which were completed by his student, Hiroshige II. His prints often rely on an understanding of perspective to create depth and his style had a major impact on Dutch artist Vincent van Gogh, who created an oil painting based on a hashi bridge. In the rain in 1887, Hiroshige street scenes in prints such as Night View of Sara Wakamaki, 1856. Also inspired Impressionist artists such as Auguste Renoir and Camille Pissarro. Hiroshige was working in Japan at a time when the country was opening its doors to the outside world after centuries of isolation. And his work captures the changes occurring in the 19th century through a lens of the ukiyo-e tradition. Why was Thomas Jefferson so interested in architecture? Thomas Jefferson absolutely despised colonial Georgian architecture, which was common in his home state of Virginia. In his notes on the state of Virginia, see 1781, he wrote, It is impossible to devise things more ugly, uncomfortable, and happily, more perishable. Jefferson, a skilled amateur architect who studied Palladio's four books on architecture, had a vision for an architecture that would define the spirit of the new United states and served to bring the disparate populations of the former colonies together. Some of his most famous building designs include his own home, Monticello, which he built over 40 years in Virginia, as well as the Virginia State Capitol, and the University of Virginia Rotunda, a building particularly inspired by the Villa Rotunda, in Rome. The University of Virginia was the first state-funded university in the United States. And in designing its main campus, Jefferson wanted to promote education and endow the new university with a sense of permanence and grandeur. Jefferson believed that architecture had the power to change people. His designs reflect his similar political goals to create an enduring and powerful government. One that values individualism, democracy, and freedom. Who was Vermeer? Known for his genre paintings and landscapes, Johannes Vermeer, 1632-1675, painted hushed, yet captivating works such as The Girl with the Pearl Earring. 1665, The Geographer, 1668-1669, and The Kitchen Maid, 1660. His landscapes, such as A View of Delft, 1662, are meticulously painted, highly detailed, and brightly colored. Many of his paintings include individual women, seemingly alone in their thoughts. His 1657 oil painting, Girl Reading a Letter by an Open Window. 
is a quiet work in which a young girl's interior thoughts appear infiltrated by the outside world. Through both the act of reading and the light streaming in from the large window. Vermeer's brush strokes are nearly invisible. Creating a porcelain smooth texture in his work. E. H. Gombrich writes in the story of art that Vermeer's paintings are really still lives with human beings, Gombrich 433. What is Luminism? Luminism is a 20th century word used to describe a 19th century American painting style. Characterized by landscapes and nature scenes featuring diffused light effects and invisible brush strokes. Artists associated with the luminist sensibility include George Caleb Bingham, Asher Durand, Martin Johnson Heed, and other artists also considered part of the Hudson River School. A good example of the style is Bingham's Fur Traders Descending the Missouri, 1845. A painting filled with luminous mist reflecting off the Missouri River during the early morning. Two figures seated in a canoe, father and son wear bright clothes that contrast with the color and tone of the hazy trees in the background while what is thought to be a bear cub sits in the far end of the canoe, casting a dark shadow over the water. Martin Johnson heeds sunset over the marshes, see 1890 1904 is another example of American luminism. The painting depicts a red-tinged sunset over the salt marshes of Massachusetts. With a pointed haystack prominently positioned in the foreground. Luminism was an important part of early American painting as artists attempted to capture the essence of the country's landscapes and exemplifies both romantic and later realist tendencies in 19th century art. Who were some of the leading early photographers? Nader, 1820 to 1910 Nader, or Gaspard Felix Turnacon, was an ambitious French photographer known for portraits and aerial photographs of Paris, and is credited with championing photography as a form of fine art. Julia Margaret Cameron, 1815-1879 Cameron didn't start taking photographs until she was nearly 50 years old. Her portraits featured a soft, diffused light that captured the essence of her subjects. Her goal was to ennoble photography and to secure for it the character and uses of high art by combining the real and ideal and sacrificing nothing of the truth by all possible devotion to poetry and beauty. As quoted in Julia Margaret Cameron Getty Museum. Oscar Ridgelander, 1813-1875 Ridgelander was a Swedish artist who first used photography to aid in his painting. He innovated techniques in photomontage and combination printing. And was interested in both portraiture and allegorical scenes. Matthew Brady, 1823-1896 He was the leading American portrait photographer and journalist whose many famous images include portraits of President Abraham Lincoln and Confederate General Robert E. Lee. 
Brady organized a corps of photographers, including Timothy O'Sullivan, who documented the horrors of the Civil War. Jacob A. Rees, 1849-1914 Rees was a Danish-American activist and photographer who documented the plight of the poor in New York City in photographs such as Home of the Italian Rag Picker. Jersey Street, c. 1888-1889. He is known as an innovator with his use of the magnesium flash. Edward Mybridge, 1830-1904 Mybridge was an English-born photographer who worked primarily in America and developed an advanced shutter mechanism for the camera that allowed for high-speed photography that could create moving pictures. Likely inspiring Thomas Edison in his development of the cine camera. His galloping horse, 1878, captured 12 shots of a running race horse that changed the way artists depicted such an action. Who was Eugene Delacroix? Eugene Delacroix, 1798-1863 Was not interested in the defined forms and classical stoicism promoted by the Academy. This French Romantic painter is known for his use of thick brush strokes, and sweeping. Dramatic scenes inspired by mythology, current events, and his trips to North Africa. Delacroix's massacre at Chios, 1822-1824, was based on the Greek struggle for independence from the Ottoman Empire. An event that influenced many Romantic writers and artists. The painting communicates sympathy for the exhausted Greeks by focusing on the details of individual faces. A menacing Turk dominates the scene as his dark horses rears up over the group of victims. Similarly, Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People, July 28, 1830, 1830, makes heroes of unlikely revolutionaries who passionately take up arms as their brethren have fallen, ready to overthrow the monarchy. Red, white, and blue the colors of the French flag draw attention to the female personification of liberty. Whose bare breast recalls classic sculpture, as she emerges from the dust and smoke. She holds up the French flag in one hand and a bayonet in the other. Leading the revolutionaries into battle. This romantic painting emphasizes idealism and heroism in its depiction of an important historical event. How did Rembrandt achieve such thoughtful expression in his work? Rembrandt's paintings invite subtle, emotional engagement. When gazing upon a Rembrandt portrait, it feels as if you are looking at a real, living person, whose thoughts and emotions are fully accessible. This is no easy feat throughout his life. Rembrandt painted more self-portraits than any other artist in the 17th century. He practiced by making faces in a mirror in an attempt to capture the likeness of multiple emotions and states of mind. In some of his early drawings, youthful Rembrandts can be seen displaying shock, disgust, fear, and confidence. With his great painting skill, 
he was able to effectively represent textures and tangible details of clothing and skin. In his 1631 portrait of Nikolai's Rudz, a fur merchant. The man's fur coat looks supremely soft and luxurious, highlighting his wealth and business success. And yet Rutz appears humble and modest due to his thoughtful gaze. Furrowed brows, and slightly bent posture. One of Rembrandt's later self-portraits. From 1661, shows the artist after significant financial failures and the death of his beloved wife, Saskia. Rembrandt's illuminated form emerges from the darkness, his eyes in shadow and his clothing simple. His familiar face is now lined with wrinkles and his former. Confidence is now lost to sloping shoulders and puffed cheeks. Through subtle manipulations in texture, lighting, and detail. Rembrandt demonstrates his masterful ability to facilitate an emotional connection between viewer and painting. What is a genre painting? A genre painting particularly popular in the Netherlands, is a realistic depiction of normal scenes from everyday life. Genre paintings eschew idealism and fantasy, and contrast with other popular forms such as religious and mythological paintings. 17th century Dutch artists such as Johannes Vermeer 1632-1675, Jan Steen, 1626-1679, and Peter de Hooch, c. 1629-1684, are examples of famous genre painters. Who was Thomas Cole? Thomas Cole, 1801-1848, was an American painter who emigrated from England and was celebrated for his early portraits and later landscapes. His work helped to establish an American landscape tradition known as the Hudson River School. One of Cole's most recognizable paintings is the Oxbow, 1836, which depicts a dramatic view of the Connecticut River from the top of Mount Holyoke in Massachusetts, either just before or just after a storm. Although the painting represents an actual location, Cole manipulated the landscape to add drama to the scene. He was known to sketch a landscape and then not paint the scenes for months so as to free himself from the constraints of realism. Who was Nada? Nada was the common nickname of French photographer Gaspard Félix Ternacon, 1820-1910 Who was interested in photography for both its artistic value and its commercial potential? He was particularly enthused by photography's potential for realism. And he wanted to capture accurate details of the city of Paris. He even built a mobile darkroom in the basket of a hot air balloon. 
and could be seen soaring overhead, capturing aerial views of the city. The French lithographer, Honor Domier published a lithograph. Not our elevating photography to the height of art, 1862, depicting Nada working in his balloon. His face pressed up against the lens of a camera while his top hat blows away in the wind. The lithograph emphasizes Nadar's high hopes for the role of photography in the fine arts. In addition to his photographs of the city, Nadar took many portraits of notable figures in French society. Including the poet Charles Baudelaire. The writer Alexandre Dumas, and Sarah Bernhard, one of the most famous actresses of the day. What is a daguerreotype? A daguerreotype is the earliest form of photograph. Invented by the French painter, Louis Jacques Mondé Daguerre, 1787 to 1851. In the 1830s, J. N. Yeps had experimented with iodine fumes. And others experimented with additional photosensitive chemicals in an attempt to make a high quality image. Daguerre later used a silver iodide covered copper plate and mercury fumes to make a single fixed image. The invention was considered a huge boon for France and it revolutionized the way history could be recorded. Daguerreotypes became very popular for portraits, but by the latter half of the 19th century. Photography techniques that allowed for multiple prints instead of a single image, replaced the daguerreotype. What is the Spanish Golden Age? The Spanish Golden Age lasted from the 15th to the 17th centuries. During which time Spain was one of the wealthiest countries in the world and arts and literature flourished. This period of Spanish dominance began after 1492, when Spanish Christians reconquest Spain from the Moors and sponsored Christopher Columbus' journey across the Atlantic, securing Spain's power in the New World. It faded as the Spanish Habsburgs lost power and Spain lost a succession of wars including wars with the Netherlands and England. It was during this time that Cervantes wrote Don Quixote and buildings, such as the Palace of Charles V and El Escorial were constructed. Also at this time, significant Spanish painters such as El Greco, Diego Velázquez, Francisco de Zerberan, Bartolomé Murillo, and José de Rivera were active. Who was Jean Augusta Dominique Angra? The art of French painter Jean Augusta Dominique Angra. 1780 to 1867, exhibits a curious combination of neoclassical and romantic values, though he was determined to hold on to traditional neoclassical values and was considered a nemesis of the much looser Delacroix. He was inspired by the Renaissance painting of Raphael. 
as well as the revolutionary artist, Jacques Louis David. While interested in history painting, Angra is better known for his sensual portraits of female nudes. Especially paintings such as La Grande Odalisque, 1814, which depicts a sultan's concubine reclined languidly on luxurious, colorful fabrics. La Grande Odalisque is an example of Orientalism, or a romantic interest in the exotic East. In the painting, the elongated form of the concubine, along with objects of Eastern luxury, such as a fan made of peacock feathers and ornate jewelry, were decidedly romantic. Despite anger preference for neoclassicism and apparent distaste for portraiture, Who was Jacob van Roysdal? During the 17th century, landscape paintings became very popular in the Netherlands and other parts of Europe. And Jacob van Ruisdael, 1628-1682, was a leading landscape painter of the time. His landscapes are often dark and moody. And he preferred woodland scenes and coastal views populated with shadowy architectural structures. Examples of his expressive landscapes include the Jewish Cemetery, 1655-1660, Bentheim Castle, c. 1650, and Windmill at which Bijt to Ersted, 1660. What is Vanita's painting? Vanita's paintings were popular in Dutch and Spanish, still life painting during the 17th century. They are symbolic of beauty, material luxury, and the brevity of life. In Harman Stenix 1640 an allegory of the vanities of human life. The artist depicts a tabletop covered with a jumble of trinkets and various objects. Illuminated by a powerful beam of light entering into the frame from the upper left. The items on the table include a skull, oil lamp, musical instruments, a watch, a sword, a seashell, and books. Luxury items such as the sword and the exotic shell represent wealth and material possessions, other items such as the skull, oil lamp, and timepiece, serve as a memento mori, or a reminder of death. Other common symbols found in Vanita's paintings include candles, flowers, exotic fruit, and hourglasses. What is Impressionism? Impressionism is an artistic style that developed first in France in the latter half of the 19th century and is known for a somewhat unfinished quality, as well as a focus on leisure and café scenes, landscapes, cityscapes, and genre scenes. Like the realists, the Impressionists were interested in capturing visual reality but they were particularly interested in the properties of light, both natural and artificial. Artists such as Claude Monet studied changes in the 
colors of the atmosphere as the sun moved through the sky. Recent rainfall intrigued artists like Gustav Kalabat and Camille Pissarro, who both painted natural light and light from gas lamps that reflected off the rain-soaked streets of Paris. Most impressionists came from middle or upper class French families. But because their work was initially unpopular, they often lived in poor neighborhoods in Paris. Frequently gathering at the Café Guerbois in the Montmartre district. The popularity of leisure and café scenes is a tribute to the lifestyle of the Impressionists. The Impressionists had a difficult time being accepted by both art critics and the art viewing public and were regularly rejected from exhibitions at the Palais de Beaux-Arts, Palace of Fine Arts. Instead, they held their own shows between 1874 and 1886, and ended up having an enormous influence on modern art. Today, Impressionism continues to be one of the most popular styles of painting and sculpture and Impressionist shows attract thousands of visitors to museums and galleries around the world. Who were some influential Impressionists? The core group of Impressionist painters was a close-knit group living in France. Some were even related. For example, the artist Bert Morisot was married to Manet's brother. Though Manet is not officially considered an Impressionist, despite his major influence on them. The following list includes a selection of artists who are considered the major Impressionist innovators. Claude Monet, 1840-1926, Monet favored plein air, outdoor painting and is known for his landscapes, especially his water lily and haystack paintings. He painted the smoky interiors of train stations, and the facade of Rouen Cathedral more than 30 times. The term Impressionism comes from a description of his painting. Impression, Sunrise, 1873, by art critic Louis Leroy. Edgar Degas, 1834-1917, Degas was a painter, a printmaker, and a sculptor. And unlike other Impressionists, was not a fan of plein air painting. Instead, he preferred to explore the effects of artificial lighting and usually worked in his studio. He is particularly well known for his paintings of ballet dancers and his other famous works include El Absinthe. 1876, and a sculpture called Little Dancer of 14 Years. Now on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Bert Morisot, 1841-1895, Morisot's work focused on landscapes and domestic scenes that highlighted the female experience. She regularly showed her work at the salon and continued to paint professionally. Even after marriage to Eugene Manet, which was uncommon for the time. Morizot had a close professional relationship with her brother-in-law, Edouard Manet, and they clearly influenced one another. Some of her most recognizable works include The Cradle, 1872, and Summer's Day, 1879. Auguste Renoir, 1841-1919, 
Renoir was a close friend of Monet's and his work often features. Dappled light and outdoor urban scenes, such as Moulin de la Galette, 1876. Which depicts colorfully dressed dancers at an outdoor dance hall in the Montmartre neighborhood of Paris. His paintings are often cheerful and beautiful. And provide a snapshot of upper class life in 19th century France. Mary Cassatt, 1844 to 1926, Cassatt was born in Pennsylvania but spent her career in France. A friend of Degas, she also completed most of her work in the studio and she was a major supporter of Impressionism. Even encouraging American friends and family to buy Impressionist art. Like Morisot, Cassatt focused on domestic scenes and the relationship between mothers and their children. Her work continues to be highly popular, and some of her well-known paintings include The Boating Party. 1893-1894, t. 1880, and The Child's Bath, 1893. She was awarded the French Legion of Honor in 1904. Camille Pissarro. 1830-1903, Pissarro was a highly innovative artist who preferred plein air painting and drew inspiration from the countryside and rural peasantry, many of his paintings depict agricultural scenes. Pissarro applied thick globs of paint to his canvases, which didn't always win him favor with the critics, but greatly influenced the following generation of post-impressionists. Notable works include Avenue de l'Opera, Paris, 1898, and his many paintings of the village of Pontoise. What is the raft of the Medusa? Like Goya's 3rd of May, 1808, another early 19th century painting. The Raft of the Medusa, 1819, by French Romantic painter Theodore Giracault, 1791-1824. Emphasizes the pain and suffering of victims amidst seemingly insurmountable odds. The Raft of the Medusa is a great contemporary history painting that depicts a horrible accident at sea when a ship filled with French colonists ran aground. There were not enough lifeboats for all aboard. And so a barely floating lifeboat was built for the 152 seamen, which was eventually cut from the main lifeboat by the captain and the officers and left floating at sea. Thirteen days later, only fifteen suffering passengers remained on. The raft after withstanding disease, starvation, and cannibalism. The story caused a sensation in France, as it was discovered that the captain of the ship was an inexperienced aristocrat who was made captain through corruption. Jericuel depicts the raft as the passengers spot a passing ship, their first hope at rescue. Twisted yet idealized bodies, some dead, are sprawled over the surface of the tiny wood raft while the dark, foreboding ocean looms along the horizon. The viewer's eye is brought upwards, as the raft is raised on the swell of a wave. To the outstretched arm of a frantic passenger waving a tattered red cloth, trying to get attention. 
The raft of the Medusa incorporates romantic perceptions of nature with a sense of heroism, adventure, and injustice. Who were the Brackmans? Felix Brackman, 1833-1914, and his wife Marie, 1840-1916, were both artists associated with the Impressionist style and were part of the artistic social circle that included Degas, Rodin, Manet, and Whistler. Felix was mostly a printmaker and specialized in etching. He is credited with popularizing Japanese prints, known as ukiyo-e. Amongst the Impressionists, especially the work of Hokusai, Marie Brackman was primarily a painter and began her career by designing decorative porcelain, which attracted the attention of Degas. Though largely absent from art history survey texts, Marie Brackman was one of the premier women artists of the 19th century. Her career was not well supported by her husband, and she did not produce a body of work as large as her contemporaries. Mary Cassatt and Bert Morizo, however. Her work was exhibited at the Paris Salon in 1874 and she exhibited at multiple Impressionist shows as well. Who were the Brackmans? Felix Brackman, 1833-1914, and his wife Marie, 1840-1916, were both artists associated with the Impressionist style and were part of the artistic social circle that included Degas, Rodin, Manet, and Whistler. Felix was mostly a printmaker and specialized in etching. He is credited with popularizing Japanese prints, known as ukiyo-e. Amongst the Impressionists, especially the work of Hokusai, Marie Brackman was primarily a painter and began her career by designing decorative porcelain, which attracted the attention of Degas. Though largely absent from art history survey texts, Marie Brackman was one of the premier women artists of the 19th century. Her career was not well supported by her husband, and she did not produce a body of work as large as her contemporaries. Mary Cassatt and Bert Morizo, however. Her work was exhibited at the Paris Salon in 1874 and she exhibited at multiple Impressionist shows as well. Why did ballerina dancers fascinate Degas? Edgar Degas paintings of young ballet dancers were neither erotic nor psychologically engaged. Like other Impressionists, Degas was fascinated by light. And dancers provided Degas many opportunities to experiment with light as they were usually. Illuminated by heavy artificial spotlights and other types of stage lighting. In his 1877 painting, Dancer with a Bouquet, Bowing. A ballet dancer's face becomes mask-like and garish under the harsh floor lights running along the stage. In addition to light, 
Degas also explored figurative movement. Another interest that benefited from using the flexible dancer as a subject. Many of Degas' paintings feature dancers as they are stretching and preparing for a performance. Such as his 1879 pastel drawing, Awaiting the Cue. Focusing on dancers allowed Degas to represent surprising angles and poses of the human body. These paintings often feature an angular, cropped quality that brings the drama of light and movement to the forefront, and also shows the influence of Japanese prints. Why did ballerina dancers fascinate Degas? Edgar Degas' paintings of young ballet dancers were neither erotic nor psychologically engaged. Like other Impressionists, Degas was fascinated by light. And dancers provided Degas many opportunities to experiment with light as they were usually. Illuminated by heavy artificial spotlights and other types of stage lighting. In his 1877 painting, Dancer with a Bouquet, Bowing. A ballet dancer's face becomes mask-like and garish under the harsh floor lights running along the stage. In addition to light, Degas also explored figurative movement. Another interest that benefited from using the flexible dancer as a subject. Many of Degas' paintings feature dancers as they are stretching and preparing for a performance. Such as his 1879 pastel drawing, Awaiting the Cue. Focusing on dancers allowed Degas to represent surprising angles and poses of the human body. These paintings often feature an angular, cropped quality that brings the drama of light and movement to the forefront, and also shows the influence of Japanese prints. How did photography influence Impressionist painting? With the development of photography 19th century painters were challenged with setting themselves apart from the new medium. Realists had tasked themselves with accurately representing the visual world. But now a photographer could do this with the flash of a bulb. How did photography influence Impressionist painting? With the development of photography. 19th century painters were challenged with setting themselves apart from the new medium. Realists had tasked themselves with accurately representing the visual world. But now a photographer could do this with the flash of a bulb. How were painters to respond? As is clear with Impressionism. 19th century artists did not simply stop being interested in realism, this interest merely shifted. Because of the camera, artists in the latter half of the 19th century began 
to experiment with optical realism and the capturing of movement in a whole new way. In Manet's great painting, Bar at the Folies Berger, 1881-1882. A room full of dancers appears blurry, as they would in a photograph, and is an indication of movement. Photographs are also notable for their ability to capture a slice of life. And paintings such as Degas Off-Center El Absinthe, 1876, does just that. Degas crops the picture by slicing through an angled cafe. Table and cutting off the elbow of a cigarette smoking patron. In a period when artists were already questioning the value of the academic art tradition. The development of photography encouraged 19th century artists to continue to experiment with their techniques and their subjects, and to question the supremacy of classical aesthetic values. How were painters to respond? As is clear with Impressionism. 19th century artists did not simply stop being interested in realism, this interest merely shifted. Because of the camera, artists in the latter half of the 19th century began to experiment with optical realism and the capturing of movement in a whole new way. In Manet's great painting, Bar at the Folies Berger, 1881-1882, a room full of dancers appears blurry, as they would in a photograph, and is an indication of movement. Photographs are also notable for their ability to capture a slice of life. And paintings such as Degas Off Center El Absinthe, 1876, does just that. Degas crops the picture by slicing through an angled cafe. Table and cutting off the elbow of a cigarette smoking patron. In a period when artists were already questioning the value of the academic art tradition. The development of photography encouraged 19th century artists to continue to experiment with their techniques and their subjects, and to question the supremacy of classical aesthetic values. <laughs>